a series that dates back to a neutral site meeting in West Palm Beach, Florida in 1970. The Blue Jays lead it 10-8. All but the first meeting has been played since Creighton joined the Big East in 2013-2014, and the Blue Jays have it to start. Bishop, Zagorowski, can't give him any room. He lines it for Bishop, and they get an easy one on their first trip down the floor. Yeah, an easy one, but then Bishop, I think, came down on his ankle, came down limping, but he set the tone right there to Clayton to get the ball inside. Nice lob. Georgetown beat number five, Steve Seaton Hall, 66-50. Six in the semifinals. Belay's three-point play broke a 57 all tie. Because Bishop is still kind of limping. We keep our eye on that situation. Bishop with 17 points in their win in D.C. Ball knocked out of bounds by Pickett. Now, let's go back and look at the lob. It's a beautiful play, misdirection. Now he comes back in. Watch as he lands right there. Left ankle turns over. One of those quick, you know, sprains. Hopefully for him, he can run it off because he's an important piece to the straight offense. And for a player, yourself, Jimmy, that uh, had serious ankle injuries, Zagorowski hitting the jump shot. I'm sure that uh, you paid attention to him rolling that ankle. Oh, you know what? And I, I cringe every time I see because I you know, tore my ankle up my third year in the league. And, you know, luckily for him, it's not as bad. He can still run on it. Ballock with the rebound. He's their sharpshooter. Zagorowski the other way. On the baseline, weaving. Ballock did a lot of posting up yesterday in their win over UConn. Then Bill Mahoney. The kick. Mahoney rises. Loose ball. Damian Jefferson trying to track it down, and he can't. But you mentioned Damian Jefferson. He is the heart and soul and the inspiration of this Creighton Blue Jays team. Well, I mean, he does so many things. I remember back a few years ago when Kyrie Thomas played for the Blue Jays. Very similar in regards to the amount of knowledge of the game, but what they brought versatility to their team. And Jefferson, the leader not just on the court, but also in the locker room. Though. Dante Harris takes his first shot off the heel and out of bounds. Georgetown and Creighton split their regular season series. Each team winning on the road. Georgetown won 86 to 79 in Omaha and on February 3rd. They shot 50%. And Javon Blair's 22 points led the way. Creighton, on the other hand, won at 63 48 in D.C. Bishop had 17 in that game as he turns it over. We got to keep an eye on Bishop and that ankle. And that game in D.C. Check this out, Gus Creighton had 19 steals. Belay. Georgetown. A little nervous to start this game. Jefferson driving. Leaves it. Bishop tried to punch it and foul. Guess what? That ankle is okay. It's okay. Yeah, that, that ankle looks fine. <laughs> And this is where uh, Creighton is up. You know, they advance the ball up the court, force the defense now to kind of get back in the paint. And then either you hit a guy diving down the middle like Bishop or someone trailing in for a three-point shot. Christian Bishop, 11 points against Connecticut in the semis. He was 5 of 7 from the field, had 7 rebounds in 27 minutes. He's been in double figures in three straight games on 15 of 22 shooting. Playing some really good basketball at this point of the season. Dante Harris brings it up the floor. George Trump looking to get on the board. Pickett had 19 yesterday. Belay. Inside. Wow. And he's fouled. Udis Wahab in the Villanova win, he was almost perfect, especially from the free throw line. 14 of 14. Well, when you do that, look at all the attention you attract inside. That's three Blue Jays jostling for position that time. Zagorowski just got a little too greedy, got his arm, his hand caught in there and picked up the foul. But, I mean, listen, they're going to... 
post Wahab deep inside. And if you're crazy, you got to understand when Bishop has him under control and when to help. Wahab yesterday against Seton Hall, 10 points, 8 rebounds in 31 minutes. He was 4 of 9 from the free throw line. Now Zegarowski. Mahoney driving, stops. They swing it, Jefferson inside, fade away off the front rim. Belay grabs it. He'll rake it and take it into the front court. Carey on the baseline. Zagorowski. 15 footer. Good. Got to respond, guys. And again, that secondary break. Not necessarily did you get something right away. No, but then he reset with the pick and roll. The defense still was kind of half a step behind. Got to his 15 foot jump shot. Made it count. Tough job for Dante Harris. Yes. Guarding Zegarowski and being guarded by Zegarowski. Meanwhile, Wahab with the beautiful jump hook inside. You know, Patrick Ewing never had a jump hook, just to let you know. He had a jump shot. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he had a jump shot. So, and it went in a lot. It did. Mahoney. Uh, they got it. Mahoney right now has been struggling with a shot. Last nine games, only shoot 24%. If he can get it going, that just opens up the door. The more offense for Creighton, of course. Only three points for Mahoney in the semis against Connecticut yesterday. Ballack finds Mahoney. He explodes on the baseline. Cut off. Ballack, quick release three. And hits. I asked him before the game, where did you get your jump shot from? He said, it's a combination from my mom and my dad. I said, why do you say that? He said, because my dad's Don and my mom is LaDonna. So Donna and LaDonna helped me learn how to shoot that jet. Well, you got a pretty jump shot. He's been struggling from behind the arc. That's a great sign that he's able to hit that early. That's why he went to the post a lot last game, Gus, to try to find his offense and not just settle for threes. Belay sets his feet for three. Long rebound. Dante Harris, new shot clock for the Hoyas. Belay again. It's time. It goes down. Northwestern State transfer from Denver, Colorado. Makes it a 9-6 game. And I believe it was his first start against Creighton. He had 17 points when they won the game. Blue Jays throw it away. 14-11 uh, to play in the first half. Creighton up by three. His greatest player, that man, Patrick Nostalgia. Coach Amazing. Thompson passing away in August of 2020. We miss him. Well, we know he's watching this one. And he's rooting on his Hoyas with that towel draped right over his shoulder. Inside, Ballot, double pump, triple pump. On the side rim, no. Belay with a rebound. When you think about it, 84 2, the first Big East team to win a national championship. So. Kind of set the standard of what this great conference would ultimately become. And if Michael Graham comes back the next year, they win another. Bro. Easy. It easy. I know Villanova played the perfect game. But they Michael, did. But Michael Graham was one of those guys. He was like the gooch. Yeah, no, he was, he was a bully. Yes. And, you know, would also played into it because he had the ball ahead. So it, 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 it was a little menacing at the time. It's kind of brawling, too. And, yeah, that's right. Had the T-shirt on underneath. And I used to love those gray and blue Nikes. You were recruit, weren't you recruited by Georgetown, yeah, Jimmy? I, I was, big time. Did you make a visit to D.C.? I did not. Inside, Ego F.A. misses the layup. Ballot with the rebound. Well, Big John never forgave me either. <laughs> he would let me know when I did games. Beautiful pass that time by Ballot into Jefferson. And that's where Trayton is extremely difficult to guard because they spread you out because of their shooting. But then, like, even Ballot, you got to... You, Ballot, you got to pay attention to him. And now Jefferson was able to sneak... Right behind the defense to get it easy, too. Pick it. He's got to get going. They need his offense in this game. Such a talented player, gifted athletically, but he's got to make sure his mind is right. O'Connell. And 
Javon Blair now. He's instant offense for Patrick Ewing. There's the floater and air ball in his first shot. Georgetown a little tight, would you say, Jimmy, to yeah. start this one? No, they are. They are. And right now, Creighton is a team that seems more at ease mentally right now what they want to do. Creighton down by 11 in the first half yesterday to Connecticut. They kept their composure. You implement a game plan, you operate that game plan, you can trust these guys because they are older. Let's see how Georgetown settles in and responds offensively. Pick it. That one deflected. For Creighton, Jet Canfield has come in the game. 5'10 sophomore from Topeka. Belay heads out. Colin Holloway is checked in for Georgetown. Where's number 23 for Belay? Holloway from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Sharif Mitchell unable to play today due to his collision yesterday in the semifinal versus Connecticut for Creighton as the Hoyas toss it out of bounds. And that's what you see sometimes with Blair. Bad decisions passing the basketball. Well, it's because sometimes, you know, just keep it simple. Just make the simple play. That time he jumped in the air, the intention to get it to pick it quickly was there, but it was the execution. And again, against a Creighton team, you can't have the empty possessions because they'll make you pay. Canfield pressing the big minutes in this game, a title game. Here's Jefferson. And the rebound, Ego Efe. Let's see what Dante Harris tries to do against Canfield. He'll take a jump shot. Ego Efe goes up for it. Holloway with the rebound. Blair, the kick. Pickett, step back jumper, tough. Holloway going for it. Rebounded by O'Connell. What a good look there by George. Had not able to get it in. I thought Pickett actually was going to put that ball on the deck and attack the rim. He chose to step back, tough jump shot. Picked up off the baseline. Holloway, good effort by Pickett. And Harris, guarded by Canfield, wants to take him off the bounce. 16 footer. But there it is. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. I asked him before the game, was he in growing up? In D.C. until he was 13, and then he left to go to Tennessee. Was he inspired by Allen Iverson? He was like, of course. We all were, right? I'm telling you, any guard that size, during that time period, A.I. was like the inspiration to how he could play a big-time level. Yeah, so, turn it over. Now let's see if they can get something in transition here. Blair, wide open three. Boom. And that's his shot. Nice look from Dante Harris. It is, too. But here's the thing. The push and then the simple pass made easy. Guess what? Now you got a clean look at the basket. I think the biggest matchup in this game, when Zegarowski's on the bench, is Dante Harris against Jet Canfield. This one right here. And you see Dante Harris really picked up the pressure on ball defense since Canfield came in the game. Jefferson. Game rebounding for Georgetown. Remember, Creighton out rebounding Connecticut yesterday by 17. And Connecticut is a very good rebounding team. Now Harris to the bucket. And a jab for Ego Efe. Told you about that matchup. Sharif Mitchell is out. He hit a big dance. Zagorowski back in. He's guarded by Blair now. Yeah, smart move by getting quick rest for Zagorowski, but knowing that the offense wasn't operating as smoothly with him next to Coach McDermott. He may have to play this whole game. I'm sure he doesn't mind. Zagorowski says yes. I would have said <laughs> But you know, the thing, the beauty about an experienced player, you notice there's no rush in his game. 
you know, he gets to his spots. He analyzes when he can get up and get the correct shot. And that's what you love from, you know, your junior point guard. Wahab put it on the floor, turns it over. Mahoney the other way. Ballock got a quick trigger. Lobs inside and knocked away. Well defended. Belay was on his back. Now Belay to the basket, left hand off the glass and in. Well, yeah, two great plays. The deflection at the defensive end and then trailing, able to get it, and he didn't settle for a jump shot attack the rim. Zagorowski tries to wrap it around and steps on the baseline out of bounds. Well, reward. Belay here for the great defensive effort on the opposite end, able to navigate through, finish with his off hand. And this is when Georgetown is special, too, in regards to getting downhill, getting those big bodies inside, and don't settle for just jump shots. Blair. Carey. Along with Belay, Holloway. And Wahab. Holloway on the baseline. And that ball. Deflected, picked up by Christian Bishop. We'll leave it for Zegarowski. And not only he had to kick the carry right in the corner, but chose to shoot it. Ballock. Rebound Bishop inside. And he comes up short. Wahab contesting. I tell you what, Georgetown makes it tough for teams inside to finish. Oh. And that's Donald Carey. Had two points in the semis against Seton Hall yesterday. Georgetown up by a deuce. Outlet pass. Holloway can't make the grab as Blair. Ill-advised pass once again. That's his second turnover. Seven. You know what? And again, it's not, it's not in the league itself. It's which team. The right team that fits his game. And he'll determine that. But I'll tell you what. He got a lot of basketball left here with Creighton. I always think of guys like Fred Van Fleet. Oh, yeah. And they didn't think coming out of Wichita State as a senior that he would really be as effective in the NBA. And guess what? Championship man, he proved that wrong with a big-time contract, too. Blair the other way. Down the lane. The runner forced it up. Back it out. Belay tracks it down. Nice hustle. Belay in the corner. Blair lefty three. He's firing it today. Out of bash. Out of bounds. We'll head the other way. So Denzel Mahoney checks out for Creighton. DJ, DJ, right here. Damian Jefferson back in. Boy is up by two. Kristen Bishop that time rolled extremely hard, rolled right into Javon Blair, who suffered the bulk of that contact, and that's where the foul took place. But this is a smart play because the scout report is going to tell you on this roll, you got to step in and bump the roller. <laughs> and when he bumped him, he was able to pick up a foul. See, you would have avoided that. And they would have to take you out of the game because you wouldn't have done that. No, I wouldn't be See, that's taking any kind of bumps, Jimmy. Come on, man. You got to clean yourself that. up for your team, bro. Come on. Belay sets, fires. Wahab got two hands on it, couldn't hold it down. Antoine Jones breaks it out. Zegarowski the other way. Stop and start. All balance. How about that? Come on, man. I mean, now, it, it looks... That's how I would have played Oh, yeah. Okay. You, you would have got in there. You, you're right. But because you're intelligent, just like Zegarowski that time, no one stopped him. He didn't pick up his dribble. Got to a spot. Belay, a brick loose. Squirts out, picked up. Blair, he'll take a three. And it's Javon Blair. Has come off the bench in five straight, averaging 15 points a game. He's made a trade in his last 37 games. Bishop again reloads. Can't get it to go. And I think that Wahab, the 
does a nice job inside just holding his hands up. He's 6'11 with the wingspan of a condor. Yeah, and he doesn't come down at the end to commit the foul. Blair again, and the ATM is open. Bro, listen, it's some guys you just got to let shoot, and you deal with the consequences. And Blair, when he gets it going, is amazing with his three-point shooting. 24-18 Hoyas. Harris playing Zagorowski to the baseline. Nice track. And they throw it away. Well, it's a reason why Javon Blair, his last 36, game, <clears throat> 36 games, Gus has made a three. 37 now. Now it's 37. And here's the thing. His teammates trust him. His coaches trust him. He trusts himself. And again, you understand who he is as a player. He may miss two in a row, but guess what? He may make three in a row. Well, he's third in school history with 206 made threes, trailing only Devontae Smith Rivera and Jonathan Wallace. Top of the arc. Devontae Harris feeds the post. Going to work. Big fella bump bag off the window. No, but a foul. Bob Brenner called for his first. But you know what? He picks up the foul, but he establishes Wahab his work early by getting deep post position, which makes it extremely difficult now for you to come down and dig because he's so deep. That it takes a minute to get down to get the ball out of his hands, and once you react, either he scores or he picks up a foul. Right now, he's losing his concentration at the free throw line and a foul on the baseline as Belay out hustled Kalkbrenner, and Kalkbrenner, just like that, picked up the second. So he'll have to go to the bench with 4:12 to go here in the first half. Well, Coach Max going to keep him in. Blair down the lane hangs. Oh my gosh! What a play! That's one of those. Guys. Come on, man! And back off. Oh, great shot. Ballock the other way, halfway down, pops out. Here's a rebound. Dante Harris, Georgetown with numbers. Harris down the lane on Zegarowski, pushes off. Ball batted around, out of bounds, and Georgetown will hold on. Hey, listen, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I don't know. I think Javon Blair was both on this one right here. But again, his ability to create shots, to finish, you just deal with the consequences if you're trading. It's like, man, that was pretty good defense, but better offense by Blair right now. Georgetown rolling up eight. Day and I said, I didn't know you're from Brampton, Ontario. I didn't know they played basketball in Canada. I thought that was a, were you a hockey player? He laughed and said, no, never hockey, only b-ball. <laughs> only b <laughs> I thought you should have asked him if he could ice skate. I, you know what I'm saying? I could boot skate back in the day. <laughs> then the shoot, Blair. You mentioned, Jimmy, he is not afraid. Inside, Wahab oh, off the glass, no, Belay with the follow, and it will not count, shot clock violation. Let's we'll take a look and see, I mean. Creighton 23 to 15. Yeah, 10 of those guys on the offensive boards as well. Here's the lob inside, Paul Britter, nice catch, and he's fine. And it's very interesting, Kalk Brenner left on the floor, Jimmy, with two fouls. That doesn't happen very often, and he's only a freshman. I know, right? Well, that just shows a little bit of trust, too, that Coach Mack has in Kalk Brenner that he'll not commit. That third foul. That third foul. Knowing that you're going to need him in the second half to battle with the 
Biggs of Georgetown. He misses both free throws. Wahab with another rebound. Five rebounds for Wahab here in the first half. 28-18. Draws a double. And he throws it into the backcourt out of bounds. Well, into the backcourt for a violation. The thing that he'll learn is how to accept the double team and then beat it. And what I mean, Gus, is when he sees that double team coming, now take a dribble towards the defender that's coming or towards the sideline. That now increases the space of you being able to see back to where your pass is going to be. Mm. You know, that time he kind of jumped in the air, frantically threw it away. You have to be calm under that pressure. So he'll learn that. Remember, Wahab is a sophomore. Yep. Now, 246 to go, first half. Jefferson, he's been very quiet offensively. Belay's done a nice job on him. They swing it. Zegarowski. Now Bishop, two to shoot. Mahoney. And the rebound to Blair. One and done for Creighton. Blair down the lane, the runner. Boom. But you know one thing about this Georgetown team, because they have limp, in particular inside and on the perimeter, you don't have to double team to help as much, guys. So that's not opening up those three-point shots, those looks that Creighton normally get. Creighton right now looks out of rhythm, playing a little faster than they're accustomed to. Think about the adjustments defensively that Georgetown has made. Harris, 15-footer, goes down. Dante Harris gives Georgetown a 32-18 lead. Remember, folks, 49 years ago today, Georgetown hired John Thompson. He passed away this past August. And Coach Thompson, the architect of this program, you know his best player, Patrick Ewing, wants to win this one for a man that was like a father to him. Imagine that. Not only winning the Big East tournament, great block that time, Adelaide, but also punching that bid right into the NCAA tournament, that ticket, you know? Mm -hmm. And Georgetown is an eighth seed as you take a look at the block. This looks like an old school Hoyas team here. It, it does. It's, I mean, swarming defense everywhere. Just when you think that you're open, you got an uncontested dunk. Here's Belay again over the top, and now that, that's just great defensive principles by the Hoyas. Look at and the steal. Dante Harris picks Zagorowski's pocket, gets to the hole, and lays it in. We got one here at Georgetown now. And how about the adjustments and not burying your head in the sand when Georgetown got down early, able to fight their way back in. And just look at, they didn't get the rebound. I mean, it's still right there. I mean, after the block. But it was the anticipation of what's going on. Look at the quick hands by Harris right here. Did he identify Zagorowski right in his rearview mirror to, to take his time and lay it up? I mean, he's playing. He's a freshman. But he's playing above and beyond his years right now. Jefferson. Oh, and Jefferson. Oh, it rims out. Batted away by Wahab. Now, the Hoyas. If Georgetown wins this game as an eighth seed, it will become the third lowest seeded team to do so. Syracuse with Jerry McNamara and UConn did it in 2006 and 2011 for UConn with Kevin Walker. They were nine seeds. 34-18, Zagorowski. And Creighton is all out of sync right now. They are. Slow start for key players. And you see Damian Jefferson just two points. Mahoney zero points. And Christian Bishop had a lot of shots at the rim. But have been negated a lot by the size and the activity of the Hoyas inside. And you think about this, Gus, that Denzel, Mahoney, Jefferson, you know, in regards to scoring points for their team. These guys are so important to what the offense does in Ballot. They score like 45% of the team's points. 
about a nine second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Dante Harris takes his time. He yo yo's guarded by Zegarowski. They spread the floor for him. Now he gets into it with eight to shoot. Inside, Wahab, great position, and he gets the roll. Whoa! Look at the Hoyer. 36 to 18 in the Big East Championship game. Top of the arc, Jefferson. Air ball. O'Connell. Air ball. Whoa! About the 18 points in the paint, about the 15 to 0 bench points for Georgetown. No team has ever overcome a halftime deficit of 18 points to win a Big East tournament game. And here comes Creek. Their principles have to get it going. Zagorowski's done it. He's four for five, nine points. But Bishop is one for five. Jefferson, one for six. Ballot, two for six. Mahoney, 0 oh for six. And O'Connell, 0 oh for two. But part of it, too, Gus, coming into the game, and I pointed it out earlier, Mahoney had been struggling with a shot. Ballot struggled, struggling with a shot. And a tough time to do that when you're playing against a team that has so much to prove right now is not going to give up. Jagorowski takes Harris to the basket and banks it down. right there the reverse pivot took a little contact from Mahoney but because he was on balance Gus he was able to use his legs to get up on that nice little jump shot inside Jefferson left hand short gets his own rebound and five what Gus we saw a lot of this last night against UConn just Segarowski putting his head down just getting to the to the rack and here's the Excellent footwork, balance. Nice little stroke right there by Filet, right there in the lane. Box cube coming on. That's going in. And it did go in. So, what do you tell your team if you're up 18 at halftime, heading into the second half? You, you remain focused. Don't try to take chances. What got us to lead was our aggressive nature on defense, and we didn't turn the basketball over, which allows Creighton to get out and run. Those little things count. Stay aggressive, but play smart. Only six turnovers for Georgetown in the first half. Creighton turned it over eight times, and mm. Yes. You know what I love about his game? Everything. Well, besides that, and that includes this, guys. <laughs> his understanding of I don't have to drive all the way. Allow me to get to my 15-foot pull-up and take the shot. Because if I miss, I got bigs on, inside that can battle and maybe keep the ball in possession a lot. It's Ballard. Mahoney's looking for his first field goal. Great defense. Good hands. Pick it. Three on one. Pick it to the hole. And stripped out of bounds. Georgetown will keep it. And you know, the art of the mid range game sometimes you don't get a lot of credit for. It. But again, when you're a team hunting for a win, these little shots right here can deflate your opponent. They don't have to be deep threes and dunks, but. It's like when you play dominoes, I'm just going to nick you to death. You know what I mean? How about Belay? And he makes it a 43-21 to 21 game. Georgetown can do no wrong, especially on defense. Mahoney, again, continues to struggle. Dream shake, baby. 
When he gets it that deep now, Mahoney did a great job of poking it away initially, but Wahab able to regather himself, stay patient, utilize that nice jump hook inside. Mahoney in and out, snatched down Dante Harris. Georgetown looking for their first Big East tournament title since 2007. As you go back, executed play underneath out of bounds. Jefferson a little late to the party. Belay makes him pay. And then a great defense by Mahoney, but it still goes in. And then watch the shake inside, jump hook, left shoulder. Money. We missed the fans, but I love the sound of the game, Jimmy. Oh, you hear everything, man. From the officials to the players to the coaches, the bench, delay, hard drive, and five. And you notice, guys, that Georgetown is able to easily get themselves in the lane. And when you do that, you collapse the defense or you're able to get to a little sweet spot to pull up for a shot that you're comfortable with. Now, that's totally opposite of what we see with Creighton. Normally, with the players that they have on the court, they're able to break down the defense and get some shots. Three things you need to know about Shudie Belay. Let's see. One dinner guest would be the former president, his favorite current athlete, King James. And his occupation of not hoops, he wants Jimmy Jackson's job, <laughs> not mine. Hey, bro, you got a long career here. Take your time. <laughs> go, go get your money first. It, it'll be here. Hopefully, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll be 60, 70 years old. Not doing this, maybe, but when you get done playing. Zagorowski, Georgetown up 47 to 21. Ballock on the handoff, cut off by Kerry. O'Connell squeezes his way down the lane, rejected by Belay, into the hands of Carl Printer. O'Connell sets. I mean, Gus, they, they've got good shots. You know, and sometimes it's just the opposite, like when the team is making shots, everybody seems to be in rhythm. And now with Creighton, even the wide open shots that they're accustomed to knocking in are extremely difficult. And Dante Harris draws the foul and will go to the free throw line. Georgetown 47, Creighton 21. Georgetown's had incredible Big East moments. 1980, Oregon State. Mm -hmm. Get the automatic bids out of the Pac-12 and the Big East. That's going to really give the NCAA selection committee some things to think about. As it should. I mean, if that's what, you know, conference tournaments are made for. I mean, Big East wanted to get four teams in, and this could be a way that that happens. Again, you still have an at-large bid available because of the Ivy League and the forfeiture of the season, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle that as well. 49 to 21. Nobody saw this coming. Creighton has been playing such excellent basketball, especially down the stretch. O'Connell, loose, carry, outlet, kick it. Zegarowski gets back. Delay a three. Oh, my goodness. Everything working for this young man. Shootier Belay. 15 points. Make it 16. Thank you, Jefferson. And he's five for behind. Gus, it's amazing when you allow your defense to be the catalyst of how your offense is going to operate. When you have energy on the defensive end, it just parlays over to your offense. And the thing about it is this, is that Creighton, they're really uncomfortable operating in their half-court set. Georgetown is with them every step of the way. If they get by them, now they recover. They may not block a shot, but they challenge. So they make it extremely difficult for Creighton to be able to settle in outside of when they started off hot early in the game. Something about height and length. Belay is 6'7". Pickett is 6'9". Wahab is 6'11". Carey is 6'5". Well, Pickett is 6'4". 
Six nine? Pickett is six nine. Yes, he is. You see what I'm saying? So, so where's the relief when you're switching? You know, going up for a jump shot, diving down the lane. Well, the way this team is playing, Georgetown, if they're able to win this game, mm -hmm. they could cause a lot of problems in the NCAA tournament with their size, length, defensive mindset, and a point guard that knows what he's doing. You know what? And a point guard that has the trust of his coaching staff, which I think is very important for a young point guard. Because now Patrick believes in him in situations where he needs a play to get done. And now Dante Harris is able to execute that play, not just once, but over and over and over again. And when you have that from your point guard, your offense now is able to operate at a high, you know, maximum occupancy that they can really be effective on the court. I got you. 54-23. Big East title. And a whistle. Uh, the officials are looking at the clock. Odd smiles on that Georgetown side. Well, it's amazing, you know, what brings you and galvanizes and brings the team together when they went through adversity is winning. You know, and the belief that it works. Now, again, we still got 14 minutes left in this game. A lot of things can happen. Alex O'Connell. Off the heel, rebounded by Blair deep in the corner. Blair was the energizer bunny for Georgetown in the first half. Yeah, he was. And I think you made the point, too, Gus, when... Coach Mack made the substitution and put Jeff Canfield in the game. Dante Harris picked up a little bit. That, I think that changed the momentum. Great shot that time. Uh, Connor, but that changed the pace and momentum of the game, I think, at that time when he made that substitution. Sharif Mitchell unavailable to play today for Creighton. He bumped his head yesterday in their win over Connecticut. He's their backup point guard. So Zagorowski may have to go this entire second half. Canfield just unable to get it going as Blair turns it over for the third time. Jones cross court Mahoney. And Denzel Mahoney struggles to continue. He is old. For 10 from the field. Zagorowski. Great defense for a time by Harris. Jones. Inside, Cockbrenner. Nice play. There you go. And a timeout call. Big John used to always say when he was his team was referred to as Hoya Paranoia, he mm -hmm. said, it's not paranoia if they're actually after you. <laughs> it's, it's the truth, right? It's the truth. It's the truth. 54-28. And Wahab can't hold on. He loses it out of bounds. Yeah, that time Wahab, I think, had the move in mind he wanted to make before the ball actually got into his hands. One of the few unforced mistakes that the Hoya offense has made here in the second half. Mahoney 0 for 10. Jones spinning. Zagorowski 10 to shoot. Jones again top of the arc. It was a Memphis transfer. Nice size on it, 6'6". Mahoney continues to fire, 0 for 11. New shot clock. Jones. Back door, Mahoney. Oh, guess lost what? it out of bounds. The boy had the other way. Guess why he lost it. Why? Wahab came over, and he was ready for a little pump fake. Lost it. Now, Creighton 
playing his own. Georgetown looks unfazed. Cross court, Belair. Don't let him get a look. Because that's what he's doing. When it's rolling, it's rolling, guys. 16 for Javon Blair off the bench. Hoyas take a 57-28 lead. Well, I mean, the difference, too, Gus, is that Georgetown has been able to operate their offense outside of when they first started the game without any kind of resistance. Gallop answers on the other end. That's a great. You can't trade baskets with it. You can't. You have to get stops. I mean, multiple stops, two, three, four in a row. And then be able to capitalize on offensive end in order to cut into the lead. We know this team can score in bunches, but the shooting has been off, not just this evening, but even last night, so to speak. And you know what I love about Georgetown in this game in particular, mm -hmm. and I've been noticing it during this tournament. I love how their guards have been able to really feed the post their entry passes have been excellent and that's kind of a lost art I believe in college basketball well, the, the lost art part is because you don't have as many post-up players anymore so you're not uh, entering and practicing I didn't think about that. But with Georgetown easy pass inside no way that should happen but again the breakdown in the defense by Creighton has been prevalent since mid the first half all the way through the second but your point being when you have a post-up coach player that played that position he's going to teach everything about it. not just a post-up player but the guards get the big man the ball just like this underneath out of bounds get up big fella the lay 19 points for Belay in this game. And Ballot. Belay with a rebound. Belay, 19 points and 8 rebounds. Looking for a shot. Cut off on the baseline. As we approach the 10 minute mark, Belay. Batted up, Lahab, Jones, long outlet pass, Ballock stops. Look at the hustle to get back, though, by Blair to take away that layup. I mean, that's not giving up on the play, guys. That time, you know, you're up big. You could have easily given up. But if you do that, you're going to hear Pat's mouth, so you don't want that. Uh-uh. Bring it down. This is funny. I talked to Patrick in the locker room before the game. As Harris drives, gets in the hole, high arc or no. Be credited with the basket. 61 31. Georgetown. Unbelievable. Top of the arc, Zegarowski, and he hits it. But I talked to Patrick before the game, and we were talking about his players and his career. And he said, You know, Gus, I have to remind my players that I was the number one overall pick. I did win a national championship. And I am considered one of the 50 greatest basketball players of all time. I said, Coach, how would they not know that? He said, Gus, they're kids. They are. And it, the, here's the funny part. You're at Georgetown, right? At you, Georgetown, you, by the way. You don't think there's displays everywhere about Patrick Ewing? But this is what Pat has been trying to get this team to understand. You never give up. Watch the hustle right here. Okay, now he goes down the court with Ballard. He could have easily given up, but watch him sprint back. Now you take away the layup and force the ball to go back out. Those are kind of like you call game-winning plays, championship mindset, where you don't allow the score to dictate your effort. Take a look at Creighton's 
resume this season. Six and three in quad one games. Another 21 season for Coach Mack. How about that? They have won 20 games for the 20th time in the last 22 years. Consistency, bro. And I say this, and this is a tough, tough pill to swallow right now if this game continues on like it is. But if they find their shooter, they get to the NCAA tournament. You're talking about a tough scouting report and a tough ass against this team when they get it going in a one-game scenario. They could, to me, I can see them being a Sweet 16 team if their shots are falling, of course. Rebounding. Georgetown 40. Creighton 26. That's the story. Remember, Creighton out rebounding Connecticut yesterday by 17. Inside Wahab and he's fouled by Bishop. 7.43 to go. 63 to 34, Georgetown. Hoyas. Cell phone repair. Did you know Liberty Mutual? Hey, Gus, can I say something? Yes, sir. I mean, that read you had was pretty dramatic, bro. I mean, you should do more commercials. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe you can be the guy at the movies that does, you know, the previews and stuff like that. What about that? I mean, you're doing every, else, every other commercial. You might as well do that, too. As my father would say, son, I ain't turning down nothing but my power. <laughs> nice. So, Jamarco Pickett at the line. Shooting one and one. Balak the other way. Jefferson. He struggled mightily today, as well as this man. Mahoney. Still looking for his first field goal of the game, Denzel Mahoney. You just feel bad for him. He's old for 12 now from the field. And, and Gus, it's it's so frustrating as a player like Mahoney. He's been so successful all year. They leaned on his offense, his leadership, and the ball not going in. You feel for him for teammates, but I will say this. As a player, when your jump shot is struggling, get a layup. Get to the free throw line. You know, get a steal. Get out in transition. You know, and have confidence when you do have that opportunity because every player goes through it at some point in their career in a game where it may be a two or three game stretch where the ball is just not going in. Man. Jefferson. Cross court, Mahoney. Now he's reluctant. Baseline Bala, Carey presses it, puts it on the deck. Cross court, Zegarowski, look at Georgetown flying on defense. Mahoney, finally. There you go. And that's great defense. It seemed like Georgetown had six players on the court. Yes, it did. Um, but Mahoney, he pans to the sky. Finally goes in, maybe a little bit too late, but maybe that helps him moving forward, though, Gus. See, to see him right now still hustling and playing hard. You know, you want to win championships, you got this kind of hustle. One effort. The ball goes over your head, second effort. You know, third effort on the closeout. There's nothing you can do about that. That's just good offense. Mahoney able to knock it in. No fault of the defense. Baseline Jefferson sets his feet. That one just grazing the side of the rim. I believe of Damian Jefferson. Twelve offensive rebounds. And, and part of the challenge too, Gus, is while we see those offensive rebounds, Harris has been so good at breaking down the defense. Now you have to help 
That takes a body off of Wahab and Glay at times. That's why they're able to get in and get those offensive rebounds because of that dribble penetration. Inside Wahab, outside carry for three. Pure. The Georgetown Hoyas have played a perfect game. 66 to 37 now. Unbelievable. O'Connell answers. Alex O'Connell makes it a 66 40 game. Five sixteen to play. The winner of this game receives the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Remember, Georgetown's an eight. At the beginning of the season, they were picked to finish last in the conference. And so much has happened with Patrick Ewing and this team over the last couple of seasons. So many defections last year. Then at the end of last season, they lose Mac McClung. He goes to Texas Tech. Makeshift unit transfers, freshmen getting major burn. COVID, a pause. Boy is counted out. You can never count out Patrick Ewing. Well, the old saying, guys, addition by subtraction. Meanwhile, Alex O'Connell starting to get warm. Still got five minutes left in this game. Well, but here's the mindset of your crate. Okay, again, if this stands back, but you're playing for something bigger. You're playing to make noise in the tournament. So maybe you find some rhythm and confidence near the end of this game where you make a little run, you make some shots, you feel a little bit better, even though you're disappointed you're losing or you may have lost the game. But you found something a little later that you carry with you to the tournament. Got it out, Terry. Harris a three. Long rebound. And Harris another rebound for Georgetown, and they'll slow things up. Boys want to take the air out of the ball now. Carey, Wahai slipping to the goal, and he's fouled. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Supports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text PLAY to the number on your screen to help keep kids in the game. Georgetown started this game a little shaky. You knew they were kind of tight. But as we mentioned, Jim, when Zagorowski went out for a break and they brought Jet Canfield into the game, Dante Harris saw it and they got some easy baskets and it turned the entire tide of this game around. O'Connell. You know, another point too, Gus, the growth of this team mentally, and, and Patrick Ewing talked about this after the win, you know, gets Villanova. When Villanova came back, they could have easily tucked their heads and, you know, did what they did in the past, turn the ball over and give up the game. They didn't do that. Georgetown down in that game against Villanova with under nine minutes yep. to go in the second half, down by 11, and they came back and won it. And down early in this game. Okay, desperation. Oh, he rattled it home for three. Because when it's gone, it's gone, it bro. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. It just is, man. Zagorowski the other way. And a timeout called by the Hoyas. 71 46. Georgetown, his number one player, his son, Patrick Ewing, is three minutes and change away from winning it all in this conference. How about it, Gus? What were you, about 10 at that time? 72? 11, 12? I was born in 67. <laughs> <laughs> You're always giving me hard time by my age, man. I'm, I'm about to take that person to do <laughs> You always, hey, listen, you know how we do. Yeah, Holloway. Well, uh, I just figured that was going in, too. Uh, has it been going for Georgetown? And if you look at this Georgetown game, Jimmy, who would you say 
is the MVP in this game. You know, I'm going to say here, and, I'm a t and the reason why is that he didn't make freshman mistakes, in particular when the game was going in the favor of Creighton early. He didn't press the situation. He didn't overpass, overdrive. Defensively, he stayed solid. And from your point guard, Gus, you know you play point. His calmness, his ability to make the right decisions, kept Georgetown in line. And that's so important. TJ Berger in for Georgetown now, number 20. And from what they tell me, the Hoyas are really going to get healthy next year. They have some terrific young players coming in. They do. And, and, and credit to Patrick Ewing um, by staying with and sticking the course of what he wants to do and how he wanted to rebuild this program. You know, and it's, as you know, we've seen it. It's not easy when you go through losing. You can make a rash decision, a quick decision, to try to remedy the situation. But sometimes, as a program, and they say, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, programs, winning programs, are not built overnight. But you lay the groundwork with these young men that you bring in so that your future is secure. Patrick Ewing in his fourth season at Georgetown. 156 to go. Ironically, earlier this week, he came into the building here at Madison Square Garden. His name hangs from the Raptors, his jersey, his number. He came into the building, folks, and they asked him for ID. He couldn't believe it. I think they know who he is now. Oh, definitely, they definitely know. Coach Ewing. on that play and it's, it's such a zeal it, it's such a you know great hustle on both sides Gus to go back to your alma mater where you're a legend and the pressure on you to be a winner Juwan Howard is experiencing that and doing a fantastic job in Michigan but you know to go back it just shows you know the confidence the university has but but Pat himself taking on that challenge Patrick Ewing coaching at Georgetown had to be convinced to interview for this job. Oh, no good. Lose. And nice finish. As the subs get opportunities. That's Malcolm Wilson. He had to be convinced to interview. Big John convinced him to interview for this job. Coach Ewing wanted to get a funny? job as a head coach in the NBA, but was not getting any opportunities which is a shame because you know how it is in the nba sometimes they think a center can't be a quality coach for whatever reason that mindset is because there's no way that patrick during the time that he put in again he was i was on the bench with pat i understand what he knows in regards to the game of basketball not being able to get that really good look in the pros was very unfair not yet. Not yet, but, you know, I think what he's building here, you know, the legacy of John Thompson, what he put together, but then slowly building his own legacy. Hey. 48 seconds remaining. 73, 48, Georgetown. Patrick Ewing. Took this job, he looked up, and it felt like he was at the base of a mountain. Accepted the challenge. Worked it, went through adversity. All sorts of adversity. Right now, my boy Lonzo Morning sent me a picture. Having a nice cigar. Enjoy that cigar, my man. Enjoy that cigar for Hoya Nation. For the first time since 2007, the Georgetown Hoyas are Big East Tournament Champions and NCAA.